Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Lamplight City, where we are investigating a new case. Now, this case is a very interesting one, uh, but before I get into it too much, Daredevil left a very intriguing comment on the previous part, um, informing me that there was a type of electoral fraud back in the day called cooping, which apparently involved people being kidnapped and being forced to vote several times, often wearing different clothing. Now, I thought that was very intriguing because that could tie in to what we know about the murder victim and the fact that we started off in a polling station and I believe the murder happened on the night of the vote. Whether that's a coincidence, I don't know, but that seems very, very, well, coincidental. So anyway, we're here at this um, bar or pub. I can't remember what it's called. It's been a little while since I played, uh, but we're going to just go around here and... Talk, Doesn't look like cleaning up is high on the list of priorities around here. I think we found something outside in the in the drain, if I remember right. Investigate, investigate. Okay, photo of Ronan, and that's all we've got. Right. Anyway, uh, so we can talk to the barmaid here. There's lots of bottles. Someone's playing chess. Let's talk to the barmaid and go from there, shall we? Excuse me, barmaid. Hi. What do you need? Uh, wow. Okay, we can ask a lot here. Let's start with Ronan. You know a man named Ronan Lespay? Nah, never heard of him. He was killed here four nights ago. The man in this ferrotype. Oh, that one. Well, I never saw him before that night. And I didn't talk to him. You with the police or something? No. No, not at all. I'm just trying to help his sister find out what happened. So are you done with the questions? Can I get you a drink or what? Uh... Yeah, she's a shrewd businesswoman. You at least have to give her that. <laughs> Let's ask about the election night. Were you working on election night? Pal, I'm here most every night. So that's it. Yes? <laughs> yep. Christ on a cracker. You ain't too bright, are you? Yes, I was here on election night. God, uh, so you need to be rude about it, madam. <laughs> I was going to say, customer service not top of the priorities here, is it? Right, murder. Tell me what you know about the murder that took place outside on election night. Listen, chum. Do you know how busy we were that night? No. This was a polling place. We had gents coming in and out for hours. Uh. Not to mention the regular clientele. I was up to my ass in drink orders and was running the shift all by myself. Had to break up God knows how many fights, too. So you'll excuse me if I didn't exactly notice something that happened out on the street. I mean, how did you at least hear the gunshot? No, I didn't. You try distinguishing a gunshot over a room full of rowdy voters, it ain't gonna happen. Okay, fine. Let's ask about the pub, then. Can you tell me about this place? It's a bar. People come here to drink. Sometimes people drink too much, and then they're sick all over. Lovely. I get the honor of cleaning up the mess. Sounds like you're not too pleased with your job. No. I never said that. There may be rough days, but there's a lot worse I could be doing. Here, I get a place to sleep and a bit to eat and a few coins in my pocket if the customers are pleased. And you are pleased, ain't you, sir? Oh, yes. Yes, of course I am. <laughs> Good. All right, well, bar regulars. You mentioned regular clientele. Who are they? Oh, we get plenty of regulars in here. Too many to name. Which of them were here on election night? Hmm. Let me think. I remember seeing three of the usual crowd. There was Darius, up to no good as always. Darius. Then there was Singing Tom, but he wasn't around for too long. And how could I forget old Cormac? He'd have talked my ear off if I'd let him. Sound like an interesting bunch of folks. Yeah. Okay, well, let's ask about the landlord. Where might I find the landlord? You won't find him anywhere. He doesn't come around here more than once a month. Okay. Darius? What can you tell me about Darius? Hey now, bucko. You've come in here asking me all these questions, but I ain't seen nothing from you. You want more information? You're gonna have to earn it. Oh, come on. Right. Give me a gin, then. Coming Ooh, right up. do we want to be drinking? You're carried away now, Miles. There you are. One gin. That'll be two shillings. There's three. Now then, about Darius. Now that man is trouble. I've had to throw him out a few times. Why do you say he's trouble? His mind's affected by the poppy seed. He can be gentle as a kitten or fly into a rage at a moment's notice. When he gets rowdy, he gets chucked. I see. Any idea where I might be able to find him? Don't know why you'd want to find him. But I hear he spends his day at a smokehouse nearby. 
I believe it's on Chris Barkle Lane. Just look for the door with the oriental symbols above it. Ah, okay. And could you describe him to me? He's a rough-looking sort, about 55 years old, has a scar on his left cheek, grayish hair, medium build. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, interesting. So, poppy seed, that's um, opium, right? So, essentially heroin. So, it sounds like maybe an opium den, perhaps? Singing Tom. Who is Singing Tom? Ah, Tom. Not sure what his surname is, but he's in here about twice a week. We call him Singing Tom because he leads the church choir. Ah, is that right? Which church? Oh, I haven't a clue. Never really cared to ask. Does he associate with any of the other regulars? I've seen him talking with Darius a few times. They seem to be on friendly terms. Interesting. Cormac. Tell me about Cormac. He's in here most every night. Doesn't speak to many people. Just me. And a right chatterbox he is, too. Between you and me, Cormac stinks. I can understand why he doesn't keep much company. He stinks? Aye, he's a sewer worker. Ah. Spends all his day underground in the muck, so he always reeks of shit. <laughs> I see. Any idea where specifically he works? I believe he's at the treatment station, over near the ferry terminal. If this is going where I think it is, then I'm especially glad I can't smell anything anymore. <laughs> Alright, objective added. We're getting quite a few objectives. Let's ask about herself. Have you worked here long? Thirteen years. I see. Anything else you can tell me about yourself? I ain't the friendly type. We get that, thank you. Right, understood. <laughs> the election. Any thoughts on the election? Nah, couldn't care less, really. Doesn't matter who's in charge, my life ain't getting any better. Not with that attitude, But it can certainly get worse with Leroy in office. We'll see. I appreciate you taking the time to chat. Yeah, yeah. What a lovely lady. Uh, but she gave us some useful information at least. So, uh, we've got a, so we've got to investigate the murder site, speak to Dr. Edwards about the murder, investigate the taxidermy shop, search Ronan's apartment for clues. I feel like maybe we do that next. Find Darius at the opium den in Chumley. Find Cormac at the Chumley water treatment station. Wow. Okay, a lot. We haven't got any suspects yet. Uh, can we go this way at all? We cannot. Let's look at these bottles. They don't seem to have much variety in their beer selection. They do not. Uh, Looks like that's where they keep the good stuff. Of course, around here, good is an extremely relative term. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's head outside then. Uh, so, I'm, I'm trying to think, did we get something out of the drain? I seem to remember the drain being something. Let's have a look. The yesterday's rain has made the water level rise significantly. Is it just me, or does it look like there's something resting at the bottom of the drain? Right. If that's, there is, I have no way of getting to it through the drain cover. That's right, it was locked, wasn't it? And we had these Securely bolts. Securely fastened, unfortunately for you. If only there was some way to undo these bolts and remove the drain cover. That's it, so we need to we need to get something to undo the drain cover. Okay, so, fine. Let's head to the map. Oh my god, look at all the locations. So we've got Ronan's apartment, Upton's apartment, where we now live. Morgan Bakery, we've been there. We've got the police station to talk to Dr. Edwards. Uh, the taxidermy shop, the water treatment station, the opium den. It is an opium den, I thought so. And the silent raven. Now, the opium den is nearby, but I actually kind of want to go to the apartment to look for some clues there first. Ooh, okay. Quite the collection of exotic items in here. Ronan appears to be a seasoned world traveler. Interesting. Or at least knows someone who is. Not what I was expecting. There's a lot of masks and things here. Just looking at this painting is making me feel seasick. <laughs> a desk. Is it locked? Locked. Yeah. Naturally. It is indeed locked. So it doesn't look like we can get in there just yet. This Some mask masks. looks African. You should try it on. It'd be an improvement. Hey, burn. Some kind of owl mask. The hair looks incredibly familiar. Mm. This one is scarier than the other masks. That is quite scary. Wait a moment. I think I saw something shiny in the back of the mouth. Really? Ah. How about that? A perfect hiding place for a key. Nice. Is that the key for this, hopefully? Let's have a look here. This book looks a bit suspicious laying on its side. Ronan's book collection mostly consists of cheap pulp adventure novels, but this top shelf looks interesting. Yeah, this one's on its side. Look, exotic fauna of Africa, exotic fauna of Australia, secret customs of the Orient, uh... Beige Bell? Is that how you say that? I don't know. Unmarked. No unmarked. title. And it appears to be blank. I wonder if Ronan just kept empty books on his shelf to appear well read. Maybe, or maybe it's something suspicious. It's in another language, but it appears to be a Bible. Oh, Bible! Oh, that was really stupid of me. 
Oh, kangaroo. A strange cross between a rabbit and a donkey, the kangaroo is a marsupial, which is to say it has a pouch where its young reside until reaching maturity. The kangaroo is herbivorous and travels by hopping on its powerful hind legs. Koala. Koalas may appear at first glance to be small bears, but are in fact marsupials. Like the kangaroo, baby koalas spend their first few years inside their mother's pouch. Koalas sleep many hours in the day and feed primarily on the leaves of the eucalyptus tree. Black rhinoceros. An adult black rhinoceros stands 1.5 to 1.75 meters high at the shoulder and is 3.5 to 3.9 meters in length. An adult weighs 850 to 1600 kilograms, exceptionally to 1800 kilograms with the females being smaller than the males. Elephant. In African elephants, males stand at 3.2 to 4 meters tall at the shoulder and weigh 4,700 to 6,048 very specific kilograms, while females stand 2.2 to 2.6 meters tall and weigh 2160 to 3232 kilograms. Uh, it's smaller with male shoulder heights of up to 2.5 meters. Could these be like some sort of code, maybe? Let's have a look at this. You must be aware, dear reader, that the customs of the Orient differ greatly from our own. You would do well to familiarise yourself not only with common with common ones, but the but more obscure and clandestine ones as well, lest you offend anyone on your travels. Opium use. At the turn of the century, travellers to the Orient would often seek out the more exotic pleasures, which is to say, opium. Nowadays, the influx of immigrants from China to Vespuccia has caused a significant drop in this type of tourism. As many opium dens have appeared in El, Presid El Presidio, with some even known to exist as far east as New Britannia. In any case, opium dens are open to all who seek to indulge, known colic. Why can't I think of how to say that? stupid me as riding the dragon the use of opium recreationally for re relaxation or as a social activity is a common pastime uh buys you if you're offered wine make sure you understand what exactly it is you're about to drink chances are it might be buys you a clear liquid usually distilled from fermented sour gum <coughs> although other grains may be used southern china versions may employ glutinous rice while northern chinese varieties may use wheat barley millet or even job job's tears instead of sorghum the Jiku started starter culture used in the production of Beiju, Beiju mash is usually made of pulverized wheat grains. Okay, uh, shocking experience. High concentrations often too much for anyone not used to it. Hmm. Wonder if that could have something to do with the murder, or maybe opium could do. To be fair, possible. <clears throat> right, can we open this up now? Now to find out what Mr. Lespay finds so precious. Hmm. Some letters. They appear to be a pair of letters from Ronan's landlord. Okay. July 2nd, 1844. Ronan, with regards to your request for an extension to pay this month's rent, I'll glad you give you until next month. <clears throat> You've always been a reliable tenant who's paid on time, so don't be concerned. Okay. Danforth. Or Danforth. September the 3rd, 1844. <clears throat> Ronan, I understand we all go through financial difficulties, but I'm afraid I can't extend my generosity beyond the end of two months. Please have the rent ready by then, or I'll have no choice but seek legal action. Ah, so he's behind on the rent. Ship in a bottle. bottle of the SS Joondalup. Looks like a merchant vessel to me. Hmm. What's this? This one appears to be from Emily. Okay. <clears throat> December the 16th, 1843. So before the debt. Ronan, Gerald and I will be celebrating the new year and would like to invite you to spend it with us. Please feel free to bring along any guests you'd like, especially any lady friends you might have. Okay. Anything in the drawer? Wait. Uh huh. A letter from someone called Jimbo. <clears throat> Ronan, next week will be a year since we met. I can honestly say my life has changed for the better in every possible way, and I will always hold July 8th as a special day in my heart. I cannot wait to see you again, Jimbo. Ah. It's empty. <clears throat> well, we need to know more about this Jimbo. <laughs> Ooh, this teacup could use a washing. I'd be surprised if it isn't permanently stuck to the desk. <laughs> Looks like it was over here at one point. Looks journal. like you found Ronan's journal. Perhaps this will be able to give us some more insight into what he was up to before he died. All right, let's have a look at it. Read a random ent read entry from July 8th. Hmm. There are two entries, one from this year and one from last. So, start with last year's. July 8th, 1843. I've decided I need to get out more, so I'm going to a club in Gascon tonight. Stuffing animals has taken its toll, and I need to talk to someone who isn't Emily or my co-workers. Gerald told me about a place called the Crimson Cat. I'll try it, and if I don't enjoy myself, I'll just come home. Now for this year's entry. 
July 8th, 1844. Today is our one year anniversary. We're going to meet at the cat again. I love him, but I wish he wasn't so attached to that place. Emily is so nosy, I worry that she might follow me and discover the truth about Jimbo. Aha. If we moved around, I wouldn't worry, but with him, it's always the Crimson Cat. I really shouldn't complain, though. What we have is something truly special. Well, it seems that our best hope of finding this Jimbo character is to visit the Crimson Cat. That's what I was thinking. Okay, let's read a random entry. Let's see. June 17th, 1843. Someone brought in a rare big-eared hopping mouse from Australia yesterday. Stuffing it was quite a challenge as the organs were difficult to remove without damaging the body. Hmm. I think I'd rather not read about Ronan's taxidermy process any further. Yeah, so I wonder actually if we needed to find that letter to get the thing. All right, well, so um, let's have a look Ronan at the bed. I wasn't too concerned with comfort, apparently. This is hardly bigger than a bunk at sea. Okay. Illustration. An illustration that looks similar to that one. I wonder where it ended up. It's a big map. I guess Ronan won't be realizing his world travel dreams now. Death really has a way of messing up your plans. It does. Ronan wasn't too concerned with comfort, apparently. This is hardly bigger than a bunk at sea. All right, so I guess we've probably found everything we could here. So does that mean we get... <clears throat> yes, the Crimson Cat. There we go. Okay, so we've got lots, lots and lots to investigate here. Um, I didn't mean to actually click on that. We'll go to the casebook. Got a lot of letters as documents. No suspects. We've got the small gold key. Uh, and we need to find Jimbo at the Crimson Cat. So, yeah, we've got a lot to do. But, guys, we're out of time. So we'll do that in the next episode. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you from my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne, Nate, Tamley Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, Barry Aldridge, and Hobo for all the support on the channel. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.